uh, <clears throat> I when I first bought it, I, I liked it for the pictures, right? <laughs> and uh, just to see how people were making reads. Uh, but then I started to read it, and it's really fascinating information in this book. Um, one of the uh, some of the information is about oboe players, you know, who uh, studied with George Gillet, and in particular Fernand Gillet, who played it in the um, Paris Opera and um, also Boston Symphony, his first oboe. He did not make reeds. The second oboist made reeds for him, which I thought was kind of remarkable. His, uh, he said he had no patience for it. But he did study with George Gillet, who was just like the great granddaddy of oboe playing. I don't know if any of you played his uh, his a etudes, but you know, incredible musician, was worshipped by his students. Now, Fernand was talking about George uh, Gillet and in uh, his approach to reed making. He would gouge cane, okay? He would gouge it like this. Then he would let it sit for three years, three years. I mean, it's it's remarkable, and and uh, most of us, you know, give it half a day. Um, so, some things to consider: the reed the reed changes, right? Unless the cane is well aged, and even then, there's no guarantee. Now, you set the reed down, and you pick it up a day later; it's a completely different animal. Sometimes, sometimes it hangs in there, but most of the time, you know, it changes, and that's. Understandable being that the wood is very easily influenced by weather, etc. Okay, here's a reed that I made a couple days ago. And I let it sit. And it's still very resistant. I mean, there's a lot of meat on it. I don't know if you can tell from the light. This is always difficult to show you, but there's plenty of wood on that tip and the back of it. And I think sometimes it's good to let the reed. Um, be a little more heavier than lighter when when you're working on it. Because sometimes we scrape too much the first day. And I would also suggest not scraping the back of the reed, although I have here. I would suggest that you not scrape the back of the reed until the second day. And that usually helps too. Um, so what I like to do first is to just lightly dust, lightly dust the reed Sometimes I'll come off the heart. And to the corners, just lightly dusting it to get it to loosen up. If it's too resistant, which this one is. And try to get rid of the rough spots behind the heart. Okay, let's give that a shot. That's not bad. You know, reeds like this, if you were to put them in your case and leave them there for about three months or so, take them out and dust them, they'd probably be perfect reeds. This one is lighter, but it's a little out of control. And this is how I'm going to fix it. Um, when you scrape the back, and I know I made this suggestion uh, to wait a day before you do that. But when you do it, keep the scrapes long and smooth, okay, in the back. When you're beginning the scrapes in the back. Keep them long and smooth. No rough stuff. Okay. I find that my reeds work better when, um, I know I've said this before, when the proportions are right, but also when the scrape in the back is very long and very smooth, as opposed to a big, um, in, you know, hole in the back. However, when you scrape toward the back of the heart, it helps to just finish the scrape as if you're going down 
and up. I know that sounds confusing. Watch, just watch the knife. Okay, I finish down into the back of the heart. Then this will loosen up the reed quite a bit, make it more malleable when you play it. Okay, so like I was showing you, from this side and the opposite side, from the V section there to the end, needs to be thinner. I'm going to stay away from the middle of the tip as much as I can, okay? And you can see the profile, it's, it's definitely going, its lowest, deepest point is right behind the heart. So let's work the sides here of the tip, as long as I don't destroy it. And of course we've got to be careful, so we don't want to ruin the reed at this point. It's very, very close. This is where I want to be. And the angle of the knife is fairly dramatic. Hmm? Sometimes I like to straighten out the knife as I go off the end. That prevents the reed from becoming too resistant. If you cross, when you're scraping the, the tip like so, if you don't straighten out, you're going to build more resistance into the reed, okay? It's going to blow back at you. Um, if you straighten out the knife as you go off the end, okay, and say toward the side, uh, it won't become as resistant. Right, that's just another thing to be aware of. The angle of your knife. Okay. Now I'm not taking a lot off as you can see, it's very, very fine. Okay. Alright. And we do need to scrape just the corners a little bit. It's kind of what we got going on. see. I might have to smooth that out. That side's not too bad. But you can see how that's working. And you can also see that the heart, okay, is um, not very big in this reed. Only about five millimeters. All right, let's give this a whirl, see where we're at. It needs more though. I'm going to give it just a little more. Uh, there's going to be a great deal of scraping and clipping involved. You want to keep the reed at a C. Okay. So after you do that for a while, you get something like this. And, and this is a very fine reed. And I think if I were to let it in the case, let it sit in the case for a couple of days, it would uh, even out, mellow, as it were. But basically what I did was, um, to finish this reed, I just scraped, like I was telling you, from here to here and on the op opposite side, and on the opposite side, right in, the, in uh, the sides of the tip, so that it more matches what's going on in the back. Okay, because for me it's really about the balance. 
To me, this is a classic Philadelphia style read. I study with Fred Cohen and Al Genovese and and Stephanie Burke, and they're all descendants of Philadelphia school. And um, so that's to me is the only way. <laughs> And that's a classic, to me that's just a classic Philadelphia style read. It's a very fine read and it plays well.